Okay, we've got some more people signing on. Um, we'll just give them a couple more minutes. All right, it's just gone 403, Michael. We'll give it two more minutes just to get a few more people to sign in. All right, Michael, I think um, it's just hit five past. Um, I'm happy to start. Sounds good. Cool. All right, everybody. Um, welcome to a Global Education Virtual Expo for February 2021. Um, I know we're all disappointed that it's not a um, physical event in South Africa and Zimbabwe. But um, here in Australia, where I'm located in Perth, and so is Michael, um, we want to introduce you to um, not only our home, but um, to TAFE International Western Australia. Um, they've got some fantastic options and services, and um, I think it'll be a great um, initiative for you to hear directly from Michael. Michael is the um, regional manager for all of Africa, and um, he's going to explain a little bit about the institution, a little bit about himself, and the life of a student in, in Perth as well. And, um, Look forward to listening to this presentation. We will have some questionnaire time at the end. Um, so please feel free to ask any questions in the chat box. Um, I'll answer those. Otherwise, Michael will speak directly about those. And um, I've got a whole bunch of questions as well for him. And that'll help you all out as well. So with no better um, introduction, here's Michael. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, George, and thanks very much to Global Education uh, South Africa for putting this together for us. And of course, not just South Africa, but uh, a strong presence across most of Sub-Saharan Africa. And we are a very proud partner uh, in the region with, uh, with Global Education. So as George said, my name is Michael Ingram. I'm actually originally from Zimbabwe and was an international student a long time ago. We were just talking about our respective pasts and uh, I'm a bit sad to hear how much older than George I am, but we basically went to the same school together and I came to Perth and studied here as an, as an international student. One of the best decisions I ever made. I've been working in the industry now for about 10 years and I currently represent TAFE International Western Australia and have done so for uh, a number of years now, but previously used to work for universities. So I know the education system well in Australia. I also know my next door neighbor's dog barks very loudly and you might be able to hear it in the background. So. Hopefully it's not gonna to distract you too much from the useful information I'm gonna to present to you today. There are lots of different ways you can study in Western Australia, but for me, skills over the last three or four years have become increasingly important. And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. So here in Western Australia, there are different ways to learn skills or to 
uh, obtain skills-based qualifications. You can work through a private provider or private college, or you can work with a government provider. And that's what we are. So we at TAFE Western Australia, I'll explain a little bit about names and, and terminologies in a moment, but the most important point is this one down here at the bottom, and I hope you can all see my, my red uh, laser pointer. We provide skills, recognize skills, really with a view to getting you into employment and getting you recognized and certified. And if you want also getting you into a university through one of our pathways. So what is TAFE? People talk about TAFE. It's a system across the whole of Australia. It stands for technical and further education, but it's typically reserved exclusively for government vocational providers. So when we talk about TAFE, we're usually talking about government vocational providers, government colleges, not private colleges. And in Australia being government owned and operated, and as you can see on the top left of the slide up here, we are owned and operated by the government of Western Australia. In Australia, that means a good, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to be government owned. It means lots of funding, well-established, great support, and very well recognized. So the term TAFE actually refers to a whole range of government providers uh, across Australia. But in our case, TAFE Western Australia refers to the Western Australian version. And TAFE International Western Australia is basically the international office of TAFE Western Australia. So we look after enrollments of students from all over the world, and I'll show you a little bit about that in just a moment. So it stands for Technical and Further Education. I've told you already about the difference between TAFE, WA and TIWA. Just think of us as the international office to help you with the process of applying, finding the course you want, and working with global education as well on your application and, and giving you advice around whatever it is, whether it's living in Perth, whether it's your studies, whether it's your timetable, whatever it is. So that's what the international office does. We are here to facilitate you coming to Australia and we hope to Western Australia to further your studies. I mentioned already we're a government institution. That also means that we have very strong relationships with universities. So we do have university pathways. So students come to TAFE for two different reasons. Number one, get some recognized skills and then go into the employment uh, area of, their, of, of what they studied afterwards. Or number two, go into a university with recognized uh, prior learning or credit for recognized learning. So it's basically a university pathway. You could do something at TAFE and then proceed into the second year at university and finish off your degree. Some students cho choose to do that. Others choose to simply come to TAFE and then find employment with the qualification they have. They do that through a wide range of courses. And I'm going to show you, I'm not going to go into them in great detail. To be honest, we've got over 135 courses. We'd be here until you know sometime tomorrow going through all of them. I'll just give you a very brief overview of some of those courses. Um, but basically, they are this is one of the most important points. They are delivered in facilities that are second to none. Industry standard facilities, high quality facilities, all over Perth and all over Western Australia. Um, Perth being the capital city of Western Australia. So we don't just have campuses here, but all over Western Australia. Practical skills, as I've said before, most importantly, value for money. Our fees are designed to present students excellent value for money. So if students choose to come to us to acquire skills and then find employment, they're going to find that that's a very good value alternative to studying longer at university and for more uh, in the way of tuition fees. That's not to take anything away from the university, but often students might have already done some previous study and coming to Australia for them is all about a shorter period of study for a lower, a lower amount of tuition fee money and recognized skills. So we do present great value for money. And of course, the, the courses we deliver are what we call national training packages. They are recognized VET qualifications. A little bit more about what we are and what we do. We talk at TAFE Western Australia a lot about colleges and campuses. Now, what is the difference between a college and campus? I'll explain that for you in just a moment. But those colleges and campuses have a very wide regional and metropolitan presence, as I've already said, and I'm going to show you a little map so you get an idea of uh, what I mean by that. But in terms of location, whether in the capital city, Perth, which is the capital of Western Australia, or whether outside in the regional areas, Location-wise, you can't get any better. We're, we're close to public transport, close to accommodation, close to the main sort of business strips of different suburbs and different towns. So 
very, very good locations, usually because we've been in those locations for 30, 40, 50, 60, sometimes even older than that. So we're very established in different education precincts. The courses we deliver are very straightforward. We deliver certificate programs, diploma programs, and advanced diploma programs. Different levels for different students, different levels for different courses. Your entry point and your exit point will depend entirely on what you're studying and uh, what you came in with in terms of your, your previous study. So you might start a certificate program, you might start a diploma. Very rarely will you start at advanced diploma level. But similarly, not that many students go all the way to advanced diploma. Most students choose to exit at diploma, find work, or go into university afterwards. A couple of, uh, or three very interesting uh, points that people often forget about TAFE Western Australia, or that maybe you didn't know if, you, if you're new to the education scene in, in, in Western Australia. Number one, we are the largest education provider in Western Australia. We have anywhere between 50,000 and 100,000 students enrolled at any given time in, uh, in the calendar year. Now, the majority of those are local students, Australian students. And that brings me to point number two, that adds to diversity in students and staff. So we've got a high number of international students, but actually a very large number of local students. So the diversity in the classroom is great. It makes for a very enriching experience, makes for a very enriching learning environment. And point number three, our history goes back over 100 years. We've actually been around for over 120 years. So we go right the way back to the late 1800s, where we started delivering skills on behalf of the West Australian government to the Western Australian workforce. And that's what we're all about. Now, whether you end up staying in Australia after your qualifications or whether you go abroad, your qualifications will be very recognized in Australia and typically quite well recognized outside Australia, especially Commonwealth countries, South Africa, Canada, New Zealand, Malaysia, the South, South Asian countries like India and Pakistan, if you were to go there and, and work in different areas, resources, mining. So you've got a lot of recognition. Now, recently, there was some research conducted by uh, the Australian government, and there were three key outcomes uh, from that research. And the research was into the differences between university graduates and TAFE graduates in terms of outcomes. And they found that TAFE graduates straight after graduation had a higher rate of employment than university graduates in Australia. So that's one big plus. Another plus was the second point here, that those graduates were more likely to be employed in an area relevant to what they studied. Now, if a student goes from TAFE into university, that's a very important point. So if you did like a diploma of engineering, for example, with us and you entered the second year of university, your chances in that second year of university of finding part-time work in engineering are much higher than the student who's come straight through to university because that student's only qualified when they get to the end of university, whereas you already have a diploma under your belt, even though you're a second year university student, your part-time work is much more likely to be relevant to what you're studying. And point number three, starting salaries. TAFE students on average have higher starting salaries than university graduates. So that's very exciting. Again, I'm not taking anything away from university. I went to university, a lot of people do, uh, but increasingly skills are important, especially coming out of COVID. And that's not exclusive to Australia. That's a global, that's a global issue. People are gonna be looking for skills. A little bit about Western Australia and Perth. That's just a quick picture uh, of Perth city in the background on the Swan River. You might know a bit about Western Australia. Maybe you've been here already. There's a large sub-Saharan African uh, and East African diaspora in Western Australia. So a lot of people come here on holidays. There's a big Zimbabwean community here, a lot of South Africans, a lot of students from uh, Malawi, Zambia, students from everywhere. We're a very diverse state. We are also Australia's largest state, much bigger than the other states. So people talk about Melbourne, Sydney, which are in Victoria and New South Wales, respectively. But actually, Western Australia is much, much bigger and much closer to Africa, I might add. We are also, uh, as the capital city of Perth, we are also Australia's most affordable major cities. There are five major cities in Australia, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth. We are more or less the same size as Brisbane, so like third or fourth biggest in Australia. But we are officially, according to The Economist magazine, the most affordable city. 
And that's a big advantage for students who are looking at value, looking at budgets. We're also just like the rest of Australia, one of the world's most livable cities, uh, usually in the top 10 or 15. And most importantly, of all the major cities in Australia, we're the only one to have a regional designation in the eyes of home affairs. So that presents you great opportunity after your studies. That presents you great opportunity after your studies to look at migration options. Now, this little point here about flights and time zones really was more about uh, when you know we were pre-COVID, when South African Airways used to fly here daily. Uh, they don't anymore, but things will return to normal, one hopes. And we do have very convenient flights and time zones for Africa. Johannesburg is direct to Perth. Uh, Perth is the only Australian destination with a direct link to uh, Johannesburg and also Mauritius uh, when things get back to normal. But what are you going to find in Perth and Western Australia? You're going to find a very relaxed, balanced, welcoming environment. And really, all of these points down here apply to pretty much most of Australia, world-class education, great lifestyle, weather, scenery, shopping culture, and those sorts of things. But honestly, I think that Perth does it better than any other city. In fact, the key word on this entire slide for me is balance. Perth is about balance, in my view. A few very quick pictures for you. This is the famous Blue Boathouse. You might look at this and think this must be out in the countryside on a quiet lake somewhere. This is only about two kilometers away from the city center, just below Kings Park, which happens to be one of the world's largest uh, inner city nature reserves. So it's a lovely photo opportunity. Just up the river is the CBD. It's a big, prominent, important city in Australia. A lot of resources happening, but also a lot of other things happening, hospitality, entertainment, sport, a lot of exciting things happening in, uh, in Western Australia. You might hear a lot about Bondi Beach in Sydney. You don't need to waste your time. Cottesloe Beach is where it's at. Scarborough Beach is where it's at. City Beach is where it's at. Leighton Beach, Port Beach. We've got beaches, honestly, miles and miles up and down the coast. And this beach here, Cottesloe, is only about 20, 25 minutes from the CBD by uh, car or by train. So very well appointed as a city. And that's just another quick picture of the city center for you. And then, of course, there's the cultural precinct of Northbridge where we uh, have lots of festivals, Chinese New Year, bars, clubs, comedy venues, galleries, all sorts of things. And in fact, the Perth Cultural Center, the PCC, officially consists of the State Library, the State Museum, uh, the State Gallery, the State Theater. And we're very proud to say that TAFE, Western Australia, has a campus in Northbridge, and it is officially the fifth component of the Perth Cultural Center. That's very rare for an education uh, institution, but very good for us. There's a quick map. If you are not familiar with the geography in Australia and where the red dot is now is where Perth is. Much closer than the rest of the country. I won't bore you with the geography of the rest of the country. You don't need to worry about them. It's all about Western Australia. But we'll zoom into a map in just a second. I want to go back to that point about colleges and campuses. We have four colleges of TAFE Western Australia available to international students. These are the four colleges, Central Regional, South Regional, South Metropolitan, North Metropolitan. Those are the four colleges available for international students. Within those, there are campuses. So in the case of Central Regional College, TAFE Western Australia, we have the Geraldton campus. In the case of South Regional, we have Bunbury, Margaret River, Albany. And if you're wondering what these cities are like, very, very nice picture, sort of, if you're from South Africa, picture like a kind of a Mediterranean, like Cape vibe going on, especially in Margaret River. Lots of surfing, lots of wineries. It's a very nice place to be. But in the case of the Metropolitan Colleges, we have lots of different campuses available. And if we zoom into those, you'll see the Swan River that we saw a picture of earlier on, basically divides the city of Perth into north and south. North of those, are all the North Metropolitan campuses and south of that uh, river is all the South Metropolitan campuses. Lots to choose from. If you look at an overhead view, you will see that we are a prominent education facility. Here is Edith Cowan University's Joondalup campus, one of our university partners. And right next door is our Joondalup campus of TAFE, pretty much the same size as the university. Here is Murdoch University, another university partner of ours, and here is the South Metropolitan TAFE and Murdoch campus right next door. And the same for Curtin. This is Curtin University, the north end of campus, and over here is the Bentley campus of South Metropolitan TAFE WA. That's what we refer to as education precincts. And as you can see here down on the ground, 
lots of different styles of campus. Here is our Northbridge campus. This is the one that's officially part of the Perth uh, Cultural Center. At the moment, the largest education building in the CBD of Perth, but that'll be overtaken by Edith Cowan University once they build their big um, inner city campus. Here's our Murdoch campus and here's our Joondalup campus. Really lovely setting for Joondalup natural bushland. But basically all designed to make the learning experience for you dynamic but laid back, you know, interesting but also exciting. You know, it's a different campus for different uh, students and also a different campus for different courses. Some campuses specialize in particular courses that you can't do anywhere else. And some campuses have the same course as others. So you just get to choose. And speaking of courses, like I said earlier, I'm not going to go into them in great detail. We've got over 135, but there's something for everyone. Now, you'll find almost every college under the sun does things like accounting, business and management, maybe engineering, for example. Um, but I personally think we do them better than anyone out there. But we also don't just do these generic programs like engineering. We do some very unique things like aquaculture, oil and gas. Uh, we've got things like land and environmental management. We've got things like maritime. This is a very unique area, maritime. Hospitality, cookery, and tourism, of course. You might look at that and think, oh, that's an interesting area. But actually, that's a rapidly growing industry. In fact, Australia's largest employer, hospitality, cookery, and tourism. So something for everyone. Aviation management, early childhood education and community services, and nursing. Nursing is very, very popular with students from uh, Africa. And it's an interesting one because it's a fantastic course. And I'll show you a picture of one of our nursing laboratories in a moment. The only hurdle for a lot of students is English level. You do have to have a very high level of English, or you have to be able to show that you've been educated for a certain period of time in a country that is on the recognized country list. And it's not our recognition, it's the, it's the Nursing Board of Australia recognition. Fortunately, South Africa is one of those countries, Zimbabwe, Malawi, Zambia, others around Sub-Saharan Africa, unfortunately, are not. So you have to show English evidence in a different way. Let's go back to that point about diversity very quickly. Um, this is a little look at our top 10 nationalities. Western Australia is actually very, very famous for its diversity, has been for a long time. You might look at Eastern states, Sydney and Melbourne, and you'll realize that they have one or two dominant nationalities, maybe three. But actually in Perth, not one of these nationalities is above 10% of our international student population. So very, very diverse, a big presence from Europe, uh, United Kingdom, we also have a lot of students from France, Scandinavia, and a lot of students from Africa, Kenya, uh, Zimbabwe, South Africa, Mauritius, as you can see, I think it's in here, there it is. Uh, so very, very diverse. I'll just pause here on the entry requirements slide. I just wanna make sure this uh, chat box here is a question I haven't missed. Nope, it's just a welcome message. That's good. Uh, we'll get to questions later on. So very quick look at the uh, entry requirements for South Africa. And I'm sorry I haven't put a slide in here for uh, other countries in Africa like Zimbabwe. But the short of it is students very rarely have a difficulty meeting the academic requirements for TAFE Western Australia. It's mainly meeting English requirements uh, for certain courses. But typically students coming out of uh, year, year 10 or year 11, we basically, our admissions team draws equivalency to Australia in year 10 and year 11. And effectively, South Africa, Zimbabwe, other countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, almost always academically students are on a par. So there's very rarely an, a difficulty meeting the academic uh, requirements. Okay. Um, let's move on to our university partners. So we have three university partners, Curtin University, Edith Cowan University, and Murdoch University. Um, we partner with them in different ways. We have what's called articulation arrangements. Now, articulation means very simple thing. It means the university looks at a TAFE program and officially recognizes it for a certain amount of credit into their degrees. And that applies to local students and international students. But the term packages really applies to international students. That means you can package your TAFE course with the university course, you get one student visa. We do have an online university pathway finder tool, uh, which is very useful to use and get an idea of what course can lead to what degree. Just bear in mind when you're looking at it though, that universities have a different credit calculation for what constitutes one year of study. 
So when you see 200 credit points for Curtin University, but 24 credit points for Murdoch University, you might think that Curtin's offering more, but it's actually the exact same. They just have a different calculation. It's a bit like comparing uh, South African Rand to Australian dollar or uh, US dollars to Australian dollar. A little bit about the teaching uh, at TAFE. Obviously, being a skills-based institution, uh, we do focus on, uh, and this is something we take a lot of time and effort in doing, and we're very proud of doing, we do focus on having very small classes and small learning environments. We believe that if we don't have those, it's not an effective way to learn a skill. So it's not like some colleges where you might have five, six, seven, maybe more students trying to do one task all together on one machine or in one apparatus or on one workstation. Every student has their own workstation at TAFE. Yes, there's gonna be teamwork. Yes, you're gonna be doing individual project work, but by and large, if you are learning a skill, if you have to be competent in a particular skill or task, you have to do it yourself. So we focus on small classes, very practical, very student-centered, uh, and every course either has a workplace simulation built into it or has a supervised work placement where you go out and do a placement with one of our industry partners. So that's very exciting for students. Uh, most of our facilities, in fact, all of our facilities are industry standard. Obviously, if you're going out onto a placement with industry, we rely on industry to, to be providing the facility for you. But the facilities that are on campus are industry standard. So when you leave with your qualification, you're going into an environment that you immediately are familiar with. Online studies, we do have a small component of that at the moment. That's a big question at, at the moment with COVID. It's a tricky one to answer. There is a small component of online, usually for more administrative work, theoretical work, but the practical stuff we believe has to be done face-to-face. -face. So it's very difficult for us to deliver courses online. A quick look at some of our campuses. This is early childhood education here. This is one of our commercial kitchens. It's an example of, a, of what we call a, a supervised uh, work, uh, sorry, a workplace simulation where we have our own functioning commercial kitchens and restaurants on campus. This is one of our nursing laboratories. It's an interesting picture, this, because uh, when I toured our Joondalup campus and I toured the nursing laboratories back in 2018, the lecturer show, showing me around, she said, Michael, do you know that our nursing laboratories are so high tech that the government has earmarked them for redeployment in uh, a case of emergency? And I said, what kind of emergency? She said, well, in the unlikely event of a global pandemic, we can use our nursing laboratories for uh, for emergency purposes. And I sort of laughed and said, oh, well, um, that's never going to happen, but that's good to know. And of course, here we are in the world of COVID. And if Western Australia was unluckier than it has been with COVID-19, and we had numbers like the Northern Hemisphere, these laboratories, these nursing laboratories would have been redeployed as functioning hospitals because they literally do function just like normal hospitals. Laboratory technology, very interesting area, of course, with vaccines, uh, but it's more than just vaccines and medication. And this, laboratory technology is all about taking minerals and identifying what's in them. Is there any chrome in them? Is there any copper in them? Is there any gold in them? Is there any anything that we can extract uh, in the mining industry? And that's big business here in Western Australia. So lots of employment opportunities in lab tech. This is one of our oil and gas facilities. This is actually on one of our campuses. It's a scale replica of an oil and gas facility using water instead of oil, of course. Now I go back to that point about value for money because it's not just about the facilities, it's not just about the quality of the learning environment, it's also about what you are getting in the way of support. And international students need support. I can tell you that when I first arrived in Australia as an international student, a long time ago, back in 1997, I struggled for six months, big time. I really struggled. I didn't realize that there was such a strong support network available. So we take great pains to explain to students that there is a lot of support out there. It's very, very important. And that's part and parcel of what your tuition fees cover. So we deal with stress, health, mental well-being, study skills, career guidance. We have employees come onto the university, uh, sorry, onto the uh, TAFE College campuses to talk to students about what op employment opportunities there are out there. We have international coordinators on different campuses to look after students from an administrative point of view with enrollment, with timetables, with class attendance, with lots of support available. Like a lot of things in life, it is incumbent on the students sometimes to just put their hand up and say, I need a bit of help. 
we're very lucky in Western Australia and generally in Australia as a whole, but typically, uh, specifically, I should say in Western Australia, we're very lucky that international students have not suffered as much as some other countries around the world. A few more campus pictures for you there. Beauty therapy, conservation and uh, land management, environmental science, things like that. Aquaculture. Any country, you might think what's aquaculture, but any country that has a coastline, i.e. Mozambique, South Africa, Mauritius, any country with a coastline has to be taking seriously aquaculture. It's a rapidly growing industry. We cannot continue to fish wild fish populations. They are not sustainable. And that's where aquaculture comes in. It's essentially like farming cattle, but you're farming fish in the ocean. So they are paddocks, they are pens. It's a very, very interesting business and very exciting business as well. Let's talk quickly about our fees. We'll get onto a few pictures and some uh, infographics in a moment. Just very quickly on fees. I won't dwell on this for too long, but I talked about value for money. The courses basically range from about twelve, thirteen thousand dollars to about seventeen, eighteen thousand Australian dollars. This is Australian dollars, by the way, not US dollars. So the Australian dollar uh, is about, I think, 0.73, uh, I think something like that. So um, yeah. one Australian dollar will buy you something like 0.73 US cents, I think something like that. Uh, so very good value for money. We do have material fees and uh, uh, resource fees on some of our courses, and they can range from zero all the way up to $3,000. But that's for the duration of the course. That's for things like your equipment, uh, you know, supplies, your, your knives, if you're in commercial cookery, all sorts of other things, safety equipment and that sort of stuff. And of course, there's living expenses. So you have to prepare, this is probably a bit out of date, this number, I think. I, I left it in there, actually, and I'll tell you why. But generally, the Australian government recommends about twenty twenty one thousand dollars for living expenses every year. I've left it as 18, because I actually think that in Perth, you can get away with a lot less than that. Not really supposed to go with that as an official line. But but my view is you can get away with uh, around about $18,000 a year, maybe even less. It's very much dependent on your lifestyle and what kind of part-time work you're doing. In Perth, you can save a lot of money and you can make a little bit of money as well working part-time. A quick glance at accommodation. We don't have our own accommodation, but we do work very closely with our university partners. Uh, it just depends on how you want to live. $120 a week, all the way up to $300 a week. There are some exciting city-based uh, accommodation options available as well cross that bridge when you come to it, but put it on your radar. And when I say 120 to $300 a week, depends on your circumstances, that's included in that number that I was talking about earlier on, $18,000. That's everything outside tuition fees. So budget for about $18,000 a year, and that would include accommodation for you. A very quick look at the COVID-19 situation in WA. It's very, very good. You might have heard that we're in a one week lockdown, which is why George and I, as you can see, are sitting at home. And that's because we have taken a very hard approach to a single uh, case of COVID potentially getting out into the community. And that's the same strategy we've had for basically the best part of a, of a year now in Western Australia. Hard and fast has been our strategy for a long time. We've had a very good life over the last year. We're at home now, we can go out to the shops and things like that, but it's only because there's one case he's now in hotel quarantine and in fact in the whole of western australia out of the population of two two and a half million we only have nine active cases so far three days into this one week lockdown that one case has not led to any other cases but it's early days so we're just keeping an eye on that but honestly the risk in wa remains very very low uh, and as i said currently in a in a one week lockdown so we're in a very good position um Let's have a look at a few pictures. This is Fremantle Fishing Boat Harbour. These are just some kind of touristy images for you. And then maybe we'll pause for some questions or feel free to ask them as we go through some pictures. Uh, Fremantle Fishing Boat Harbour, great place to go and uh, have some fish and chips and enjoy your evening. This is Ningaloo Reef, which is up in the northwest of uh, Western Australia, Valley of the Giants. This is about four or five hours south of Perth, uh, the treetop walk. Um, this is actually a World Heritage location, by the way. These trees don't exist anywhere else in the world. So very, very interesting. This is a bit closer to home. This is up in the Swan Valley. Anybody looking to look at spring wildflowers in Perth, the Swan Valley is the place to do it. This is in the far north of Western Australia, one of our national parks. Western Australia has got everything, um, including, this might look like it's straight out of Stellenbosch or Cape Town somewhere, but actually this is a, 
uh, a winery in uh, Margaret River called Voyager, which is a very, very nice uh, tourist destination. One of the most famous wineries in, um, in Australia, actually. Another quick look at uh, our CBD, and we love our sport. I'm very sad to see that Australia has just cancelled its tour of uh, South Africa, uh, the cricket team that is, because of COVID. But we do love our sport. And a fun fact for the day, this is uh, Perth Stadium. And this was opened a couple of years ago. And in fact, in 2019, this stadium won the Grand Prix uh, in the World Architecture Awards as the world's best sporting facility. That's really interesting. Not Melbourne, not Sydney, but it's in Perth. I'll leave you to uh, marvel at that while I have a quick look at this question here. George says he's got a few questions pinged to him. Fire away, George. Let's go Michael, to uh, another quick uh, picture. Yeah, go for it. I just wanted to say, I think this, this webinar is, I think, really interesting for students. One, for what TAFE offers, not just what Perth offers, but I think also listening to two people that have done the full experience. You know, we're both from Zimbabwe. We both came as international students. We both did the graduate skill visa. We then looked for employment. We then did the, all the variant work visas, then did our residency, and then became both became citizens of this awesome country. So I think for the students that are on here, I think they really got to take to heart what we're saying in terms of, it's not just about what you study, it's that balance. And the key word that you said is pivotal for me for being an international student. It's about finding the right balance. Um, so my question here yeah. to you is, when you spoke about employability and the support that TAFE is offering, can you go a little bit more into how that support would work, especially for somebody that's doing maybe a business course that then looks at this website online, maybe has received information from yourself or the counselors, could you just go a little bit more into that? Yes, great question, George. Um, and balance, as I said, is a key word. Balance is a key word for us because Perth uh, is not as competitive, it's not as crowded as other places in Australia. And that balance allows you a lot of opportunity to find yourself, to find opportunities and to make your way through you know, the different levels like George was saying. But let me address that question specifically. When we talk about support at TAFE WA, in every area that you study, it's essentially two-pronged. So the staff on your college, on your campus, or at your college, on your campus, I should say, they are tasked with not just teaching you a skill, but they are tasked with supporting you with academic uh, support, English support. So when we say academic support, we mean like, you know, learning effective ways to get through your books to get through your notes, how to study effectively, how to prepare for assessments, competency assessments, things like that. So academic support, English support, could be mental health support, whatever it is, activities, social activities, those sorts of things. So the support from the staff on your campus is not just about teaching you at the front of the classroom, it's about engaging with you and making sure you're not just getting what they're teaching to you, but you're getting a broader picture of how you fit into the scheme of things with not just what you're studying, but how you're living your life in Western Australia. Are you enjoying yourself? Are you engaging? Are you being sociable? Because these are all networking opportunities. That's the first prong. So it's essentially, I mean, I say this to students all the time, coming to Australia to learn something is not just about learning a skill or a qualification. It's about learning about yourself and learning about other people. And the more you do that, the more you get to know other people and in a, in a city like Perth, where there's that balance, you have a lot more opportunity to network and be more effective than you do in a crowded competitive place. So that's the first prong is that that idea of support, not just the teaching, but also the socializing, the teaching you how to network, giving you advice, giving you, uh, as I said, academic support, English support, mental health support, whatever it is, social functions and that sort of thing. The second prong is industry connectivity, industry partnerships. So we can teach you a course, we can support you through that course, but we have to be able to back it up with industry connectivity. And as a Western Australian government owned uh, vocational provider, and as a large vocational provider in Western Australia, and in fact, in the country, our industry connections are very, very strong. 
So there's the support from the staff and the great course that you're learning on the campus. That's all great. But also we provide opportunities, not just through your supervised work placements, but also through career fairs and through things like projects. So you talk about business, George, if you were doing an accounting project, for example, you know, it's not just a, a case study. You probably be, will be doing case studies, but they will also be real life scenarios. So industry will come in and say, okay, uh, we're trying to open up a new office uh, in uh, uh, let's say Bunbury, for example. So we're a, we're a small provider of uh, bathrooms and kitchen fittings and things like that. And we're opening up a business in uh, Bunbury. We want to expand. Now Bunbury is a city that's uh, two hours south of us. So that, that industry partner might come to the TAFE college and speak to the accounting, and accounting students and say, right, you need to help us with our costings, help us with our budgeting. How can you help us? Those are the sorts of projects you're going to be working on. And that applies to all sorts of different areas, hospitality as well. So the industry connections we have are very, very strong in every area that you study. So that second prong of not just supporting you and making you the best version of yourself you can be, but also giving you opportunity to then take that version of yourself and present it to industry before you finished your course, during your course, that adds that second component and it makes you very, very employable. It makes you recognized. Of course, you've got to drive yourself. You've got to be outspoken. You've got to be engaging. You've got to get your name out there. But those industry connections are that second prong that help you that help you get there. I hope that answers the question for you, George. Yeah, no, it definitely does. And um, that was something that I wish I had taken advantage of when I was studying. And, um, I went to Edith Cowan University. We learned the, we learned the slow way. <laughs> we learned the slow way. We didn't listen to you know our parents, and we didn't. We thought we knew everything, and um, was always nervous to speak with the support counselor or the guidance counselor at the university. And I look back at it now, and I look at all the. Um, the alumni sort of uh, newsletters that we get and the way that they are helping to connect students, it, it really has improved over the years, and especially in the last 10 years in getting businesses more involved. And um, I think that's something that's so that's yeah. you have to take advantage of. I've got another question. Here Very much you. so. Go for it. I think this is, this is a um, COVID question. Um, so um, please everyone understand that it is a, um, constantly changing environment um, with immigration and with different offerings. And um, so we'll answer this as best we can. What's happening on campus currently and um, what's happening to students that are onshore and applying to TAFE? Yes, okay. So that's a pretty straightforward answer. Uh, what are we today, Wednesday? So the last three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, I talked earlier on about Perth's strategy over the last year, um, or Western Australia's strategy over the last year with COVID, which is to go hard and go fast with COVID. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just gone, and including today, we've been in a, a, a one-week lockdown. We're halfway through a, a one-week lockdown because of that one case uh, that has potentially got out into the community. And we're, I think, I'm confident that I think we're very much on top of that, or at least we will be. So those three days we've been in lockdown, everything's been shut, schools have been shut, universities have been, universities have been shut, and TAFE campuses have been shut as well. And that is very much the exception. Before that, up until Friday, life was basically 100% normal, 100% normal. Students were on campus, students were in class, uh, they were studying as normal. And they have been for the best part of... Uh, I would say not quite a year, but certainly since like May or June last year, where we came out of that early stage of caution, cautionary lockdown. Since then, things, are, things have been pretty much normal, except for the last three days. And I think it'll go back to that next week. So students who are onshore, uh, they are, we've obviously already started a February intake, or at least we're about to start a February intake. So in fact, I think orientation, if I'm not mistaken, was last week. And classes were supposed to start this week. Uh, they're obviously going to be pushed back a little bit. But I'm fairly certain that as of next week, things are going to be pretty much normal unless something rears its ugly head again. But this is for onshore students, of course. So students have come from other states where the state borders have been open up until recently. And they are studying as normal as well. It's a different matter for students coming from overseas. Obviously, that's not possible at the moment. We are optimistically looking at... Uh, July as our next intake with the hope that borders will be open, international borders will be open. 
honestly, I think that's increasingly uh, difficult to commit to. I mean, I'm going to be optimistic and say you never know. There might be some travel bubbles by then with the vaccine rolling out, but it's just too early to say. So our focus really is, uh, and has been for a long time in WA, is on being able, especially as a skills provider, to deliver face-to-face -face learning to the students currently onshore, local and international, to the best of our ability, with the exception of the last three days. So with the exception of the last three days, it's been pretty much life as normal. I think that's kind of what you were asking, if I'm not mistaken, George, and tell me if I've, if there was something you wanted to know. Yeah, know. no, definitely. I think, it's, I think you've answered that right. Um, just from our, our perspective at Global, if you were wanting to apply to TEF, um, you know, it's, it's a case of having to be patient. Um, we just all have to keep safe um, and keep in contact. So hence, if you are going to apply to TAFE, We'll definitely assist you with that process. We will obviously get you in contact with Michael directly. Um, and we help support and guide you throughout this process until you're able to leave and um, come and study on, in, in Perth. Um, Michael, That's I've got correct. another and of, so, oh, Sorry, sorry, Michael, go ahead. The only, thing I was, the only thing I was gonna add to that just very quickly, George, of course, is yes, applications, wherever you are, applications are completely open. Yes, you can still apply, even if you're offshore. You can still apply. Apply for July. That's the next intake. It's increasingly likely that that application, if you get an offer for a place, that'll probably be deferred to February 2022. But we're not sure yet. We're still optimistically hoping that July is going to be an intake. Uh, sorry, go ahead, George. Another question. Yeah. No, thanks, Michael. It's good to, to say that as well. And and just on that point as well, you know, it, it's it's not a negative aspect of it being deferred. It just means that you're going to be more prepared. You'll have more things in line. So by all means, do not let the, um, the pandemic hold you back from achieving this dream of, of studying abroad. It's a pivotal moment um, in, in human history with the pandemic, but it's, it's a case now of us helping yeah. you achieve your international dream. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, Michael, the, the next question I've got here, which is... I think you've kind of answered this, but I think it might be worthwhile answering it uh, again. What is the what is what is TAFE's values in terms of student? Okay, I see what they're trying to ask. Okay, so what is TAFE's value towards international students? Um, I think they're trying to hint here: is it just to make money off international students, or is it the value to actually help these students better their lives? Um, I can tell you personally from running a restaurant in Perth, the staff that came through from a TAFE accreditation course, the skills far outweighed a lot of the backpackers who have experience from other countries in the world. It just, the, the professionalism was, was far exceeding what um, my expectations were. So personally, I think the value in terms of offering real life skills and wanting to help you achieve your goals it, for me is is a, is a pivotal point for international education. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what is the value of TAFE to international students? <laughs> the question is, what is the value of international students to TAFE and to the broader employment sector in Western Australia, really? Uh, we, we really value international students at TAFE Western Australia, but differently to the way, I mean, universities have a different approach. That's not to take anything away from them. Our fees are around about 50% lower than university fees. Our focus is not on revenue from international students. Our focus is on delivering recognized skills-based qualifications. We are part of the West Australian Government Department of Training and Workforce. Department of Training and Workforce. That has essentially been a continuous existence now for basically over 100 years, delivering skills year after year to the workforce. So we are really actually deemed to be a critical essential service in Western Australia and have been not just for a long time, but particularly during COVID because we deliver skills. So our value to international students and international students value to us, it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship, if that's the right word. I can't remember my, my biology terminology from when I was at school, but we benefit each other greatly. International students bring diversity to the classroom. They bring a different perspective to the classroom. Uh, they bring a great vibe to the city of Perth. They bring experience, a lot of them, and then they get added to that, uh, a West Australian uh, qualification that's recognized around Australia. 
and then they go ideally into the workforce of Western Australia. So we want students to come to TAFE, but we don't want them to leave Western Australia, we want them to stay in Perth. We are very much part, TAFE Western Australia is very much part of the broader picture of what our strategy is as, a, as the government of Western Australia. And that strategy is about employability, it's about getting the skills into Western Australia so that we can continue to be and continue to grow into the city that we uh, that we always promised to be and, and have been for a long time. So value is really about recognition. We recognize students, students get a TAFE qualification that is recognized by employers. Um, and then they find their find their way hopefully successfully as as residents of, of Western Australia. Yeah, no, totally well said, Michael. Um, it's, I'm looking at that picture of Optus in Perth and, and what you're saying is really resonating because you, know, you go to that stadium and you don't re you'll you'll meet people from all over the world working at that stadium. You know, it's it's such a multicultural. You really stadium. do. Yeah. Yeah, you really do. Well, yes. Yeah, speaking of multicultural, I mean, I I've, I've got a couple of other things here that I wanted to show you. I won't dwell on that. Suffice it to say, Perth is closer to Bali than it is to Sydney for anyone who uh, um, wants to uh, to go there on holiday when things get back to normal. But speaking of cultural diversity, I mean, this is um, a very quick look at, at Western Australia in terms of uh, people's birthplaces other than Australia. And you can see, you know, there are a lot of people from Zimbabwe, a lot of people from South Africa. Um, can't see any other countries from Africa on that list, but I know that Kenya is also quite high. So we're a very, very diverse state and we're very proud of that. I think sometimes there's a perception that Western Australia is a little bit less diverse and less culturally exciting than Melbourne and Sydney. It really isn't. We just, we're just not as arrogant as Melbourne and Sydney. <laughs> That's not to take anything away from Melbourne and Sydney. We just, uh, we're just more humble about it. You know, we're very, very culturally diverse here. A couple of other interesting infographics, if anyone's interested, you know, Western Australia, uh, in terms of Australia's total share of exports, Western Australia has by far the largest contribution to Australia's exports uh, over other states. Um, and this is an interesting point, especially in the context of COVID, we have out of all the five major cities, the lowest population density on a par with Brisbane. But why would you want to go to Brisbane? There's no beach. I love Brisbane. It's a great place, but there's no beach. Yeah, it's, and we love really our sport. Is. It's true, George. I know. Yeah, I mean, it's really. I mean, Brisbane's a lovely city, but you know, we've got beaches here, um, and I know I've most people love the beaches. We love our sport. Sorry, go for it. I've got a question for you. Yeah, and I think this one might interest um, the students on this webinar. With Perth being an oil and gas hub of the world, I mean, it's part of the Big Four with Aberdeen, Texas, um, you know, and obviously the Arab world. Perth being the next door, we've got all four major oil and gas companies operating head office here in Perth. I know BHP is actually headquarters in Melbourne, but they have a huge presence here in Perth with their, one of the major buildings on the slides that you put up. Um, you then have two big mining companies here, local mining companies, um, for example, FMG. With mining sector being such a focus in Perth, a lot of the courses that you have will also help that, but it doesn't mean you you dig a hole or you do business, you get involved in a whole range of different course, courses. Could you go a little bit into what types of courses or maybe just the variety of things that you could get into that'll help you get into that sector if you're looking to get into one of the world's biggest um, businesses? Oh, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, look, we have, that's a very good question because actually our specialty in terms of mining and engineering is just process plant technology in the oil and gas area. Uh, we used to have a mining engineering course, but we actually don't uh, offer that to international students anymore. So our specialty in the mining industry comes down to process plant technology in oil and gas, which is really learning about uh, that, that upstream to downstream flow of, of oil and gas processing uh, and managing the systems around that. So yes, students can do that and find that very specific niche role, but you're absolutely right. Outside that are all sorts of other industries, um, not least of which is maritime. Obviously mining relies heavily on uh, the maritime industry, not least of which is uh, logistics. Now we don't really have a logistics program, but you can do things like business marketing. You know, these mining 
companies, logistics is one thing, but from a marketing perspective, you know, uh, if you if you watch any West Australian TV at the moment, you'll see a lot of very interesting, nuanced messaging around these mining uh, businesses, uh, talking about the different things they do for communities, like sporting communities, cultural communities, uh, whatever it is, uh, lower socioeconomic communities. So there's there's that's that comes back down to marketing and PR and advertising. So you can do that through marketing and communication. And we happen to have a diploma in marketing and communication which leads to very exciting degrees in advertising and public relations or commerce. So there's a strong business component behind mining and engineering uh, and behind the resources sector. Uh, there was another one that sprung to my mind in just a, a few moments ago. That's what it was. Environmental monitoring and technology. This is a huge area at the moment. These companies that you're talking about, the Shells, the Chevrons, the BPs, you know, the FMGs, they are... Uh, they are de they are developing projects. It's not just them. There are a lot of small players. Parkway Minerals is, is mining potash, for example. A lot of small players. There is a strong demand for environmental mon monitoring and technology uh, uh, skills, and we have a course in that area. What does that What does that course actually mean? Your job is to basically either go on behalf of the government to make sure mining companies are fulfilling their end of the environmental bargain. Or you work for the mining companies to make sure they're fulfilling the end of their end of the environmental bargain. And it's not just that, it's also, you know, the logistics around it. So Fremantle Port is one of Australia's busiest ports, particularly on that mining and industry, uh, mining and engineering uh, arena, I should say. And it's getting a little bit too big. So there's a lot of talk about where it's going to expand to, what kind of road and rail networks we're going to have to put in place to cater for that expansion. Now, when you want to build road and rail networks, that comes down to, again, environmental monitoring technology. What sort of effect is it going to have on the environment? But also construction. In fact, just on Sunday, I was having coffee with a guy who has done carpentry, and he is working on the airport rail link we're building at the moment, and he's an ex-TAFE student. So these sorts of things, these expansions around logistics are part of the mining and resources industry and part of Perth's expansion. So it doesn't have to just be, and laboratory, te laboratory technology is another one, by the way, that's identifying, helping to identify different natural resources in what we're digging out of the ground. So you're absolutely right. There's a, such a broad diversity of um, employment opportunities in mining and resources, but also in areas that are affected by mining and resources, because Perth is growing because of the wealth we are getting from mining and resources. And that growth means building an airport link, uh, building bigger suburbs, building high-rise apartments, that's construction. Um, tourism and hospitality is growing, not just here in Perth, but some of these mining towns are becoming big tourism destinations. You know, Port Hedland's an old mining town, but it's become a really interesting tourism destination. Just look at Kalgoorlie, for example. I do have a habit of talking a lot when I get excited about things, but tourism and hospitality has benefited greatly from that, that mining boom that is still so prominent. So we are not a one-dimensional state. We are becoming a multi-dimensional state. No, definitely, Michael. It, that was well said and well answered. Um, a couple of people have just dropped off and I think one person's having, I think, internet issues just dropped back on. Um, has anybody got any other questions that you would no, like to ask, Michael? Um, give it a couple of seconds. I think Melody's a new arrival. Please do send your questions in the chat box. Uh, I'll just flick through a few more pictures. I just wanted to show you a bit of sport that goes on in uh, Western Australia. We have some of Australia's best sporting teams. We have the Perth Cup, which was last won by Roger Federer and um, Belinda Bencic, I think her name is, from Switzerland. We have got the Fringe Festival, which has just been put on hold this week, but uh, it's going to kick off soon. All the big names, artists, all the big name artists come to Perth. So all three of these pictures have been taken at that wonderful stadium I showed you earlier on. So Eminem. You too, Taylor Swift, they've all been to Perth in the last couple of years. Rooftop movies. It's a lovely world out there. And we've been very lucky to be able to experience it pretty freely over the last year. Now there's a little question. Uh, let, maybe George, if you want to field that question. Great oh, question. Just, I agree. I love that view. If you want to know what Perth it is, is a great is, view. That's Perth. 
Michael, thank you very much. Really appreciate your time and um, your experience is worthwhile for these students. And um, the team at Global will help any student as well. And we'll look to get them um, introduced to you as soon as possible. And um, we look forward to Sounds great. seeing you again yeah. and hopefully having a beer in South Africa um, together. That'd be really nice. Uh, it's very difficult to find a cold castle in Perth. Yeah. They are hard to come by. But I have to say, and I'm not just kidding, I'm not joking, I'm being quite serious, that in the room behind me is some biltong hanging up uh, ready for consumption on the weekend. Um, I hung it this morning, so I've already learned to make my own biltong in, uh, in Western Australia. So there you go. Mabel will share some of that with you. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. And, uh... There's a quick question here before we go. Uh, George, one quick question. Uh, it's come from Melody. I think Melody's joined us a little bit later. I think Melody's joined us a little bit later. No, she was on. Um, uh, but she's I'll... but she's asking for medicine, so she's obviously looking to do something, you know, to become uh, to get into medicine. And we actually don't offer that. I don't know if you can contact Melody directly and give us some advice around that. Yeah, Melody, um, I've got your contact details. Um, I'll stick you an email, and um, we'll get the team involved straight away. We've got some exciting options for medicine into Australia, and um, we can definitely help you with that. Thanks a lot, everybody. Good luck, Melody. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. No worries. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Stay safe, everybody, and I hope you're all safe and well uh, where you are. Thanks, Michael. Cheers, there.